So a couple weeks ago I posted a little poll on the channel. I said, do you guys want to see some like a how-to abstract maybe? Illustrations by Pete. Everybody said yes, no one said no. So I'll do that. These videos take a little bit longer, so I may not do them one right after the other. I may take do a couple little videos in between them and then just do more of the how-to stuff like every other or something like that. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to definitely do that. If you want to see it, I'd love to do it. I love talking about abstract watercolor, so that's my thing. And not just the watercolor, but the whole the line and wash part of it. The whole thing ink with watercolor. I love it. It's really what got me excited about art again. When I first came back to art in around 2015, I started doing comic book characters, just ink. That's all I was doing was ink. Got into some landscape line and wash stuff. Loved it. I love doing that. And then I got into like animal art, narrowed down specifically to bird art but really what I enjoy doing is the line and wash it, even when I did all the different types of art it was always a line and wash it was always watercolor with ink is my favorite thing once in a while I like doing the the acrylics or you do the oil that that oil one that was fun I enjoyed doing that markers things like that I enjoy that stuff colored pencils I enjoy those but and I'm gonna show you we're gonna go through this whole process there's a lot of different things you can do with line and wash, not just watercolor with ink. You can do line and wash with colored pencils, with markers. Traditionally, it is line and wash means watercolor with ink, traditionally. But you can make that effect with any different mediums. You can, as long as you have a solid, harsh line that you can see, and then you're adding color and other things. So, but this time, we're gonna go through the line and wash. I'm going to go through two different ways to use line and wash. One will be first line, then wash, and then the next one will be wash, then line. It, you can use them both the same. You can get the same results. You'll see here in this video, I'm going to get similar results with both, but there's just a slight advantage on what you're using each one for, and I'll point those out to you and show you that. So. We're going to get into it, and as we do, I want you to look at this random thing over here. That was one of the most magical things that I have ever recorded. Okay, so I just want to point out a couple things here. So first here, I did a little bit of watercolor here. I did a very similar shape with the pen here and I want to show you the differences and advantages of each one and then I'm going to do a full drawing. I'll do a full example of what I'm going to show you here. Uh, matter of fact, in this drawing that I'm going to show you here in a second, you're going to see both examples very well. You're going to see what happens when you put the watercolor down first and what happens when you put the line down first in the same drawing. I'll show you how I did that. And many times I mix them around. I might do some watercolor and then do line and then do a little bit more watercolor. I'm going to show you that too. Okay, so each of these has their advantages. Okay, now I like doing, when I do abstract stuff, I like doing the watercolor first because it gives me, you can see all these little textures in here and especially if you use a granulating watercolor, this happens to be the Indian Red from Daniel Smith. So there's a lot of the granulation in here so it gives me and it also see these little blooms that happened out here that kind of popped into the next color over here it kind of makes a jaggedy edge so it, it gives me a place to put my line before I ever put it down and I can go ahead and just start wherever I think that that line is gonna go I don't have to stick real close to it but I can do that if I want and So I can do that, get all the detail that I want or not want, and I'm just going to outline this first.
Okay. Okay, so the first thing I do is outline it. It basically tells me where the lines are. And then I can go ahead and see this area right here. I can go ahead and add some detail here. It kind of gives me hints as to what kind of detail I'm going to put here. And over here too, it kind of, this is a lot lighter over here. So I might do something here to show that. And then maybe make some detail here because it kind of follows that direction. Okay. So when I do this, a lot of times it's giving you basically where your shapes are and where you're going to put the lines. You see it's a little bit darker here. So I added a little bit more water into, I'm sorry, more paint into here. And so it gives me this, this shape here. So then I can fill in as much detail as I want doing this. It's very clean. I can ride the edge of the line if I want to. Or I can go outside of the line like this and create little areas of dark spots or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to use the same colors, but here I've got to be a little bit more careful when I do this because I want to stay in those lines and this happens to be an opaque watercolor. Probably not the best one to do with this because now I'm going to not have those lines very visible. And I may have to go back over them if you're using something that's opaque. I, I would recommend doing that. You don't have to. But anyway... Now I decided to put the watercolor in in the line. Now I went over here. Let's say I go over outside the line there. That's okay. You're doing abstract art. We're going to fix that. But now I might want to add a little bit more color to one side and create the same effect I did over here. Darker spot on one side. The thing with this is I'm not really going to go outside of the lines as much. So I'm confined to what I've already drawn here the watercolor can flow a little bit. You can be a little bit more creative. Watercolor is hard to master because of the reason that it's harder to control. So sometimes it flows around the page. If I was doing this with acrylic paint, that would be fine. That's completely different. The acrylic is a little bit more controllable. Watercolor, as soon as it touches water, it runs. It's, it's all over the place. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that over here. And once I have a color that's more transparent, I have to be a little bit more careful. You're going to definitely see if it goes over that line. And uh, it, it, it is for people who are a little bit more controlled, but it doesn't have to be. You can, I'm not really being really careful here, and you can see I'm going to go outside a little bit and show you how to deal with that afterwards. Now, if there was another shape here that it was going into, running into, that would be a little different. So... If I took some of this original color here and I go put some darker spot down here and then I fall into this shape here. Now I did that over here but it was a little bit more natural. It, it kind of flowed and bloomed out and it gave me an instance of where I wanted to put texture. Whereas here I'm going to have to do it whether I want to or not. So I can go over that and cover it up a little bit. Depends on the colors you're using. And now because I'm trying to be as sloppy as possible, you'll see that this is much less controlled. There's a lot more going outside the lines. While that dries for a second, I'm going to come back over here. And when you have an instance like this, it may be a place, it tells you basically where you want to put those that texture. You can do that because it already formed it with the watercolor. You're just adding the little details wherever the watercolor goes and it allows you to experiment a little bit with the texture and maybe figure some things out if this is okay I know that that's darker so that's what I'm gonna do you don't have to stick to that but I wouldn't start putting those types of lines in the lighter spot right there because it wouldn't look right okay so I ran paper over that just to make this dry a little bit quicker instead of waiting for it to dry just to show you so now you have this you'd go back over it and maybe put little details in like this that you weren't expecting to and maybe that's how you create a little bit more interest in your piece and adding little things like that so 
So there, I just did the same thing as I did over here. I'm allowing the watercolor to tell me where to put those lines and just add that in. That's not a big deal. So on both of these methods, you still have the control to do it. You can do things however you want to do them and make them look very similar if you want to, or you can do them completely differently. The thing that I like about doing it this way first, doing the wash and then the line, when I'm doing something abstract is it allows me to be a little bit more carefree. I just kind of throw the, the paint in. I mean, I, I compose what I'm doing. I'm composing the shapes of the end result, but when I compose it, I can just be a little bit more free with where the lines go. If I draw the drawing first, then that when I do that, it's more of a stress relief thing. It's more of a, okay, I'm gonna just sit here and just draw for a long time, and then I'll fill in some color later. Or if you're doing something more realistic, you might wanna put the line on first, because then it gives you the actual thing that you're gonna, you can see it better, is what I'm trying to say. You can see the thing that you're trying to paint, and then, then paint it. You're coloring in the lines, basically. This way you're lining in the color. So you can get similar results. You'll see in this video, that's basically what I'm doing. Okay, so here I'm gonna start with some tape and I'm just using the tape to mask out some areas like I would with masking fluid, just to give some open areas where I could put the detail first and then do the, the paint on top of that because I'm, I'm gonna put a wash on top of all this tape. Now I know you love how eloquently I spoke during that whole demonstration point I mean, it just, I don't even know how you could handle something like that. See, this is why I don't do live streaming. I don't know if anyone would actually like that or not, but that's why I don't do that. It takes me a little while to get my thoughts together, and if I just do something off the cuff, sometimes I'm afraid maybe, just maybe, I'm not really going to get the right words in the right places. And while you're drawing, I can't stop and say, oh, I messed that up and go back and re-record the vocal part because I'm drawing while I'm doing it. So I'd have to kind of draw and then go back like I'm doing now. This is already done and now I'm going back and adding the voice to it. So if I mess up, I can go back and do this again. This is not a big deal. But when all that pressure's on you to make sure that you say every word correctly and what you're going to say, get the thoughts out of your head into words that people understand. It's a little bit of pressure, and sometimes I buckle under that pressure. So, it's a little bit weird for me, but either way, I think I got the point across. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to put a wash down, and not just a wash. I'm actually going to paint shapes, just like I was doing an abstract, and then adding the lines. But what I'm going to do is add the, the paint, and then I'm going to peel the tape off, and then add the lines and the detail to the white areas that are left over. That way you can see, okay, I have paint first and then I have line first. And then I will go ahead and add uh, lines to the painted area and then add paint to the lined area. So you can see the example of how that works in both. And I think I've always wanted to try this, just doing this anyway. I mean, I've done it with the masking fluid, but I always wanted to try it just with the tape. I've seen it done by several people, and it just looks fun. You don't have to really mess around too much. And you'll see I tried to use, like, air blowing the paint around in the beginning and stuff. That didn't work out very well. I ended up spraying a bunch of paint all over my desk. It was not fun. I had to go clean it up and then continue. So, but anyway, it doesn't matter. What I'd like to do here is just show you the different ways that you can do this because I really enjoy doing the paint first and then adding the lines but some people enjoy doing the line first I just think it has different applications for what you're doing if I'm doing the line wash uh, like a, a landscape or with a house on it or something I definitely do the lines first I just enjoy that first I like putting down exactly where I want everything and then I'll put in the color but when I do the abstract work I like doing the paint first. I like just being free with the paint and kind of swirling it around and seeing how it blends and how it mixes. And then I'll decide where I want the ink. It's just me. You do what's good for you, what you enjoy doing. But either way, this is fun. I urge you to try it.
Okay, now as you watch this, I just wanted to share a little story with you. Okay, now I'm not going to pick on anyone in particular. I'm not going to talk about any names in particular. But I do have this story to share with you. So whenever I see things online or I see things in articles or in books, sometimes I, my mind just goes crazy trying to figure out what are these people thinking when they say the things that they say. And so I usually complain about it here to you while you're watching me paint and draw and things like that. So I think I have found the most arrogant person that I've ever seen on a YouTube channel or in anywhere at all. And this person kind of talks to, down to, to their own audience. I don't understand. A lot of people do that. I don't understand why people do that. But, but he has that attitude about him that... It's almost that kind of personality where if you don't just accept whatever it is that they're saying as fact, something's wrong with you. You, They use that same phrase. They all do the same things. They always say, well, as everyone knows, da 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 da, -da whatever the thing is. And so that just drives me nuts because you can't even stop and say, wait a minute. What if that's not true? What if there is a question that I have about that? Because they they act like if you even question that part then you're hopeless how could you even question that part and it's the reason people do that is because they build an entire idea on one little thing and so if you can break that one little thing and question that one little thing by the time they get to everything else it's just it doesn't work so they can't if you can question that and crack it it means everything else they're saying is nonsense and garbage and I think that's why they do it it's almost like they have to tell you that you better assume the same things that they've assumed before because if you don't you're just a moron because then I can't tell you all the other things that I know and make myself seem like I'm smarter than you so I just that drives me nuts I hate when I see that and um but you know in high school he was picked on he just gives off that vibe like maybe he has an axe to grind he's got a chip on his shoulder and look maybe he's a good person you know what i believe he is a good person i believe he's a nice person i think he wants to help people he's trying to give them information it's just that when he did he just immediately destroyed them and we can all pretend like we are entirely objective about every little thing no one is objective. I know we like to think we are. No one's, you're all, you're just a victim to your own biases because, and you have them. It, it's, everyone does. There's, there's no escaping that. You have, you grew up a certain way with certain values. Either they sunk in or they didn't, or you had an experience that changed your mind about something, or you had a different experience that reinforced something else. Everyone has that paradigm. Everybody has that idea in their mind of how things are and, and oh no, I know this isn't true because this happened and this happened. And so, and it's just, it could be true, but it just doesn't matter because those things happen to you and no one can deny that those things happen to you and they shape how you see everything in the world. So, I mean, people have all these arguments about this and that if you realize for just one second that there's a reason why that person thinks that there's a reason why and i don't like the whole oh you have to if you haven't lived this experience then you don't have an opinion about it i hate that because that's not true i have an opinion that i don't want to eat rotten eggs even though i've never eaten a rotten egg i know i don't want to eat one it's just you don't have to have the experience to have an opinion about it and i don't i don't suggest anybody else eat rotten eggs because i don't think it's healthy for you but even though i've never had one and i've never gotten sick from it i still have an opinion about it it's just how it is but that's not the point the point is don't i don't understand why people do that they talk down to other people as if you can't question anything if you question anything then you're a moron and I don't like that you can question everything there's nothing you can't question and I don't care if it's been proven a hundred and fifty thousand million times you can still question it because if it didn't click for you then it didn't click for you. You still need to understand why they people say this. 
And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't ever let anybody tell you that there is. And one of the worst examples of that is when someone has a belief in something and someone tries to break it down and say, well, you just have that because, you know, your your human nature decided that you needed to have meaning in this and decide all this stuff. Well, guess what? The reason that you don't believe in that belief is because your human nature decided that you need to think you're more intelligent than everyone else and that you're superior in your thought process so you can just reason away everything that everyone else believes that it, no matter what it is you are shaped by your experience and by the way that your brain works that's just how it is and some people do believe things just because they were told that but there's also a reason why they would believe something just because they were told something and then there are other people who believe something because of an experience or because they actually sat down and thought something through and it made perfect sense to them who are you to say that you also have your own biases that you're looking at them through and looking at their idea through so it may not be an idea that clicks with you but it was an idea that clicks with them and they, that is also not to say that everyone is right and everyone has everything that everyone believes is true no that's not what it, that means it just means when you talk to someone understand there's a reason why they think the way they think and think what they think and there's a reason why you think what you think and why you think that way. That's all. If you just keep that in mind, you can have a normal conversation with someone that you completely disagree with, entirely disagree with everything they're saying, and still have a pleasant experience, be friends with the person, shake hands, go out for a cup of coffee, whatever you do. You don't have to hate everybody. And a part of that is when people start talking down to people. I don't like that. The guy just talks down to everyone in every conversation. It's not good. You, you should never do that. And so you thought none of this whole thing that I was just talking about has anything to do with art, but it's entirely just about this whole drawing because there are some of you who are going to want to put down the paint first and then the line. And there are some of you who are going to want to put down the line first and then go over it with paint. And you two just can't get along. You just you just yell at each other and you don't understand why the other person, you says this is scientifically proven that it's better to do it this way. And the other person says, no, I don't believe your science. I have my own science and my science says that I should do it this way. So, so this whole thing is really just about art. This is a whole art conversation. You just didn't know it. And so um, I've wasted enough of your time with this art conversation. So I'm not gonna do that anymore. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. I really do hope you try both of these ways to do something because you'll find a way that actually does click with you. Something that you say, okay, I enjoy doing this more than this, or this just works for me, or just how my brain thinks and works and functions. This is better for me. So, yeah, so I just want you to try these. And we're going to do several more of these abstract watercolor videos many with line and wash maybe just a couple that are just wash or just a couple that are just line but do some abstract videos i want to focus on like a mini series of just those for a while i don't know like i said i don't know if i'm going to do one right after the other because they do take a little bit longer to, to make but i'm going to do my best i'll try and set some extra time aside if i can manage that to to really get into that because that's what i want to talk about I think you would benefit from it. And if you do, please let me know. Let me know that this helped you. Let me know that this was beneficial to you in some way or at least interesting to you that you want to see more of this kind of thing because I'd love to do more videos like this. I really think that people would benefit from them. So that's why I like to do them. And it's the kind of art that I like to do. It's what I enjoy doing. So, so thumb up the video if you think that gnomes are special and you would like one for a friend, I'll let Harry the Patooie Gnome in on that, and he'll go get one of his gnome friends, and you can be... Well, I'm telling you, they are mischievous. They will give you things that frustrate you, but, you know, they're nice to have around. We get a laugh once in a while, as long as you can laugh at yourself, because the gnomes will always be laughing at you and never with you. But if you laugh also, 
they're still just laughing at you. That's just how they are. They're, they're jerks. But anyway, that's about it for me. I'm going to go, and I'll see you in the next one.